Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to answer a question. And question is, what are some advantages of using always on feature? Well, I have written down right here some of them. Uh, there are a lot of advantages, but I'm just going to show you high level um, uh, advantages of always on. I love this feature, by the way. This is my favorite feature uh, in SQL Server. So first is high availability to the user databases. Uh, before that, in high availability, we had a uh, SQL Server cluster. Uh, we had uh, um, log shipping. We had uh, uh, mirroring and all that uh, uh, kind of good technologies uh, back then. But in this, we have everything, plus we can um, specify more uh, uh, down to towards uh, the databases. So it's more gran granular to the databases uh, instead of uh, instance. And as I said that in previous um, uh, high availability clustering, uh, the whole SQL Server instance needs to be uh, failed over all the databases, including system databases, um, needed to be failed over to the passive node. But in high availability group, you can specify the databases and they will fail over um, just uh, in, in, in terms of groups. So again, specific databases can be put in one availability group. You don't have to put all the databases. You can create multiple availability groups uh, on your primary replica, depending on, let's say, you have sales-related databases. You can put all the sales-related databases in one group. And you have uh, finance-related da uh, databases. You can put all the finance-related databases in one group. And depending on your DR scenario, depending on your availability uh, scenario, you can configure those databases to be available on secondary replicas. Third is failover is more specific to databases. I, I mentioned that earlier that you don't have to, um, in, in this, uh, in always on, uh, SQL Server um, instance doesn't really failover. Actually, availability groups failover. And uh, a no more shared disk in required in Windows failover clustering for SQL Server. Uh, before that, when we uh, were using failover clustering for SQL Server especially, we had to use a, a shared disk. But now it can use local drives. Um, the next is uh, multiple read-only copies can be created to run SQL Server maintenance jobs. Well, you can run some of the SQL Server maintenance jobs on secondary replicas. Uh, again, 2012 has a three secondary replica limit and 2014 has seven secondary replica limit. And uh, s some of the SQL Server maintenance jobs you can run on secondary replicas. That is a big offload from your main production. The uh, next is main um, same thing that uh, you can run. Uh, this is the secondary replicas you can provide. You can specify, you can configure read-only um, uh, copies of the database. So uh, all the reporting uh, can run on secondary uh, um, replicas. And that is also a big offload to the main production because reporting tend to uh, be, uh, when you run the reports, SSRS reports or any kind of reporting, tends to be more resource intensive. So your main production will run at a high peak and not have to worry about uh, the resources limitation. And the uh, next is uh, multiple virtual names can be created. That's again on high availability side that you can create a, a listener and uh, then whether it's on primary replica or um, in sec on secondary replica application wouldn't know. Application will have always a connection uh, set for uh, using listener name instead of actual SQL Server instance name. So these are uh, a few advantages. Uh, there are a lot more advantages if you wanted to know the more detail on advantages of always on feature in SQL Server 2012 or 2014. Uh, you can always go on uh, Microsoft website and read more detail. I hope it helps.